everybody, welcome back to another fun and exciting Algebra 2 class. Today we're going to finish up Chapter 10. Can you believe it? Only two chapters left after this one, so keep working hard. This chapter is uh, Chapter 10.7, and it's about what's called Binomial Theorem. What Binomial Theorem is it expands the binomial to a raised power. What does that mean? Well, we've been doing FOIL for a long time. You know how to do FOIL, so you know how to square a binomial. You know how to cube a binomial. We've worked on that. It's a little bit longer process. But can you imagine trying to do like a binomial to the fifth power, to the tenth power, something like that? It's just a lot of work to do. So um, in this chapter, I'm actually going to show you two different techniques. Um, I've got one that I like and then one that the book is trying to teach you. Um, but both of them use the same binomial theorem. Uh, Pascal's triangle is uh, where we're really going to start this lesson. We can't understand this lesson without Pascal's triangle. Who is Pascal? Well, Pascal was a scientist, mathematician, um, and he lived in the 17th century. He was a French guy, and um, just re he did so much in science. You've probably heard about this guy before in science. And you've probably heard him before in math classes as well. So uh, very important contributions to the science and math world. It's crazy. The guy only lived to be about 40 years old. Okay. I'm older than that right now. And I've made zero contributions to the math and science world. This guy made contributions that have lasted for just uh, 200, 400 years. Um, and so it's... Um, you know, he did a lot with his life in the 40 years that he had. That's Blaise Pascal. And you can see that. You can see more about him there on uh, in your book on page 488. All right, so what is his binomial theorem? Well, let's start off with, um, I call this the Dorito. All right, I, I don't know why I called it that. But one, one time, like, I don't know, five or seven years ago, I called it the Dorito and kids liked it, and it just caught on. So we're going to learn how to build the Dorito here, the math Dorito. So what we do is we start with one, okay? One is like at the peak. It's like the star on top of the Christmas tree. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Um, and then we keep going down from there. And so the next tier is one, one. And this thing just keeps going with ones on the outside. And then in the middle, here's what you do you go with, uh, you add the two terms that are beside it. So in other words, you go like this. You add those two terms and you get a two right there. And you just keep doing that pattern. So then you go down with another one over here and another one over here. Then you add those two terms and you get a three. And then you add these two terms and you get another three. And you just keep going with the pattern. You put another one here and another one here. And then you add these two terms and you get a four. And then you add these two terms and you get a six. Then you add these two terms and you get a four. And you keep going and you keep going. I'll do one more level of the triangle. So you get a one, uh, then there's a five, then there's a 10, and then there's another 10. And then there's a five and another one. So you just keep going and going and going, and this thing can expand however many you need to go. Now, here's kind of the trick to this whole thing right here. You have to understand that this is, and, and let's call it, uh, we'll just call it X plus Y. We'll use that as our, and we'll call this to the zero power. What is anything to the zero power? Well, it's one. So there you go. So that's the first level of the triangle. The next one is to the one power. In other words, the X has a one and the Y has a one. So you get a one and a one, um, but that's the one power. This is the squared. This is the cubed level. This is the fourth level, and this is to the fifth, okay? So each one of these levels has a different. Now, what is this? What, what are these numbers right here? Well, here's what the numbers are. These numbers are the coefficients. Okay, let's go back to, let me kind of show you what this is. So let's go back to the squared level. So if I say x plus y squared, when I expand that, 
I'm going to multiply that times x plus y, right? That's expanding, that's squaring it. So when I actually do my FOIL, I'm going to get x squared, and then I'm going to do the outers, and I'm going to get plus x, y, and then I'm going to do the inners, and I'm going to get plus x, y, and then I'm going to do the last, and I'm going to get y squared, okay? Now, let's add these together because we have to combine our like terms. So uh, we'd have x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Now, let's look at the, remember, this is, this, is, this is the level that we're doing right there. That's the level of the triangle that we're on because we're doing the squared. Because this is squared, okay? Now, I want to show you the coefficients of these letters. So here's the first term. What's the coefficient of the first term? Well, it's a 1. Look what we have right here, a 1. What's the coefficient of the second term? It's a 2. Look what we have right here, a 2. What's the coefficient of the third term? It's a 1. Look what we have right here, a 1. It's pretty cool, right? And if you do the next one, like if we cubed it, if we, if we did it again, if we multiplied it by x plus y again, guess what the new coefficients would be? You guessed it, 1, 3, 3, 1. What if we did it to the fourth? 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. This Dorito, and you know, you can see why I called it the Dorito, right? You have, uh, it's the shape of a Dorito or the shape of a Christmas tree. I could have called it the Christmas tree, but I like Doritos better than Christmas trees. It, unless we're talking about little, little Debbie Christmas trees, and then those things are off the chain. I love those things, but you only get them around Christmas time, so... Anyways, this is, I like food, what can I say, sorry. So this is the, um, the Dorito. So it looks like a Christmas tree or it looks like a Dorito. And you can see in your book on page 489, you can see it extrapolated out a couple more. I think they go to seven there. And, and the way that they put it is they say the N is one. What is the N? The N is the exponent, okay? All right, so let's keep going, and let's let's actually do one. Let's do this one. Now, I'm going to show you the method that I like to use. I think it's easier than the, the method that the book shows you, but I'm going to show you both methods. So uh, let's look at this. How are we going to expand this out? Well, here's another trick about polynomials, and you just have to learn this, and this is just the way it goes. You start with this one, and you start with this one to the... Uh, exponent, whatever it is. So you start with this and you say, okay, so this is going to be x to the fourth, and then you go x to the third, and then you go x squared, and then you go x, and then you go nothing. Now that's important that you put that little line there because it's like a space holder. Okay, we'll erase that in a second, but we need it. Now what we do is we go here to the y term and we start here at the end and we say, okay, y to the fourth, y to the third, y squared, y, and then nothing. You don't necessarily need to put that there. And now that you've got the y term there, you can erase that little line that you put. Now I, I could go in and I could put my signs. This is a positive and so they're all going to be positive. Now, something that's interesting, if it's x minus y to the fourth, um, you would alternate your signs. So you'd say x, uh, that one's plus, this one's negative, this one's plus, this one's negative, this one's plus. When it's minus, you alternate signs. They go back and forth. But when it's positive, it they're just all positive. So you really just need to go through here and just put a plus sign with all these. Okay? So that's the easy part. I think that's really easy, to be honest with you, because you just take the x and you go that way with it, descending, and then you take the y and you go that way with it, descending, okay? Now what? Well, now it's time for the coefficient. It's time for Mr. Pascal's Dorito, okay? We didn't go all the way to the 4, so this is n, let me change the color there, this is n3, and this is n to the 4th. So this is the one that we're going to use. So all you do is you take that n to the fourth line right there, and you just take it and you move it down. So we're going to do 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. We can actually get rid of the ones because we don't need them. And you're done.
that's it. That's the expansion of that polynomial. Isn't that crazy how easy that is? It's amazing. It's amazing. Now, it does get a little bit harder when there's um, numbers involved here. Um, the only reason it gets harder is because you have to, they're like multipliers. Like, let's say you had um, a number out here already in this one. So this one with the six. Let's say you already had a three out here waiting for it, and then you put the six in. You just have to multiply them together. So if there's a coefficient of a three or something like that, um, it would give you a coefficient here. And I, I can show you how to do that. Um, but basically, you'd put 18 there because you multiply those together. So let me show you how to do that. So this is, let me go back to make this a six, okay? What if this was now a three instead of a y? So we would get rid of all of our y terms, okay? And we would take the number three and we would put three with this exponent. And then nothing there. And all we do to get the numbers is we then go back once we do this, and then we solve each one of these. And this becomes a multiplier that goes here. So this would be x to the fourth plus 3 times 4 is 12x cubed. This would be 3 uh, squared is 9. 9 times 6 plus 54x squared is how that works. Okay, so you just take your multiplier. This is 27, so it would be 4 times 27. I don't know what that is. I wish I knew what that was. I wish I was smart enough to know what that was, but I don't. So, But that's how you would do it, and then you would take 3 to the 4th would be your last term. That's how you do it with numbers. It's not that hard with numbers. It's really easy with when it's just letters. Okay, so if you like that method, you can use that method. That's the Mr. Steve method right there. Okay, so if you like it, go with it. All right. Next, let's look at the book method. All right. I'm not in love with the book method, but um, I'll show it to you. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand this to the third place. I think this takes more work than my method. So that's why I don't love it. But what they're doing is they're using combinations and they're using, um, you know, sigma and series and all that good stuff. So it's things that we've learned in this chapter, so you should know how to do it. Now look, this right here shows you that it's an alternating sign. But what you would do is you would set up a this formula right here for every single one. I'm not going to walk you through this. If you want to look at it, you can see it on page 490. I'm just going to show you how to do it. I will do one of them, and then um, you can you can see the rest. So Okay, so when you set it up, you got to set up four of these. There's going to be four terms. Why? Because it's it's cubed. Anytime, like when we had x plus y squared, our answer always came out to three terms, right? x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Three terms. So you always get one more term than what your, nut, what your exponent is. So when we're here, if we have a cube, we're actually going to have four terms in our answer. So you're going to have four sections. You'll have the first section, which will be positive, and then you'll have a negative section, then you'll have a positive section, then you'll have another negative section. So each one of these sections gets its own little formula. Okay, so what changes in each one? So why we have to put four of them, so how do we change it up? Well, what changes is the r changes. So in the first r, it would be r0. In this one, it would be r1, r equals 1. In this one, it would be r equals 2. And in this one, it would be r equals 3. And you just solve each one of them with those r factors. So right here, right here, you're putting those different ones. So you solve the formula each time. And then this is part of the formula over here. Don't forget, this is what's giving you your letters. This is what's giving you your coefficients. This part, the second part, is what's giving you your letters. You can, again, you can look in your book. You can figure that out. If you want to use that method, it's fine. I think it will take you longer to use that method than the method that I showed you. But if you're more confident with this method, that's fine. You can absolutely use it. Go ahead and turn the page. I want to do one more thing here. Uh, in this video. 
we want to find the fifth term of a plus b to the seventh. So we want to expand this thing. But I don't want to expand that. That's a lot of work. If I only need to find the fifth term, I don't want to expand the whole thing. So go back over here. And what if I said only tell me the third term? Okay. The only one that you'd have to do is the third term. You don't have to do the first, second, and fourth. You only have to do the third term because that's all that I want. Well, that's what's happening right here. We only want the fifth term. Now, this is where I think this is faster to use this method because if I'm doing, if I want the fifth term and I'm doing it the way that I showed you first, I basically have to set up the whole thing. I have to go through the whole process in order to get the fifth term. Here, I can just skip right to the fifth term. How do we do it? Well, this is our setup right here. Um, why, why are we using the fourth, okay? Because I want the fifth term. Well, the way that you do it is the fifth term equals r minus one, okay? So the fifth term would actually be five minus one. The fifth term is, is four. It's, it's just a little trick that you have to use, so you have to, to learn it. So what we want is we want the fifth term, so we're going to be using fours right here in these two places, okay? So what is our formula? Well, our formula for this um, computation is we want to do um, N exclamation over um, R exclamation times n minus r exclamation and then our letters would be we're using a and b not x and y right here so it would be a to the n minus r and it would be b to the r okay so we first have to ask ourselves okay what what are what's my n and what's my r okay what's my n and what's my r well my n is going to be 7 why because I'm going to the seventh term. I'm expanding it to the seventh term. So the n is seven. So n exclam or seven exclamation, sorry about that, um, over what's my r? Well, my r is four. I already showed you how to do that. That's, that's these right here. That's where you do the five minus one gives you four. So our r is going to be four. So this is going to be four exclamation times seven minus four exclamation. And then we have to the A, N minus R. What was N? N was seven minus four. And then the B is to the R. What was the R? It was four. Okay, now we just want to solve that. So you can just plug this right into your calculator and it will give you the answer. It gives you the answer of 35. Okay, and then you take this and you just put A to the third and then B to the fourth and you're done. So this is not that bad of a process. Um, the, I guess the worst part about this is getting the setup correct, making sure that your R is right, making sure that your N is right. So the, the only trick, and this is a trick that you do have to learn if you're going to be using this style, you have to learn how to find the R. The way that you find the R, the R equals the term that you're looking for, minus 1. So the term minus 1. So R equals 5 minus 1, R equals 4. That's important that you do the minus 1. If you don't do the minus 1, you're going to give the next term. You would be giving the sixth term instead of the fifth term. You have to do that minus 1. It's very, very important right there. All right. Well, that's all I have for you in this lesson. I hope you learned something. And um, if you need to, make sure you slide it back to watch some of those if you feel like you missed anything there. All righty. We'll see you later. You have a good one. Bye-bye.